Hi, I'm Dr. Elliot Adam from ElliotOracle.com. I'm also the author of the award-winning Fearless Tarot and Tarot in Love, Consulting the Cards in Matters of the Heart. Both books are published by Llewellyn, and Tarot in Love is a great idea for a gift for yourself or another person for Valentine's Day, since that is coming up soon. And it specializes in giving love readings, which as readers, we're often asked about. So if you want to understand your relationships or help people understand theirs better, do check out tarot and love. Uh, It is time for this week's oracle reveal. So yesterday on Instagram, I placed up a photo of three different animals and asked you to use your intuition and just ask yourself which animal's calling to you because that animal has your message. And the three animals were the blue heron, the snow leopard, and the walrus. So if you're just joining me now, ask yourself, which animal is getting stuck in your head? It doesn't have to be your favorite animal. It just has to be the one that seems to be attracting your attention. So for those of you who picked the blue heron, the card says, make a stand for what you believe in and do what feels right in spite of any judgment or disapproval from others. And Blue Heron is all about getting back in touch with what's authentic within you. The Blue Heron has also been called the Water Phoenix. So there is this sense of rebirth and renewal through your own emotional experience by coming back home to what your values really are. First card for Heron is where it's going to be best for you to place your focus this next week. And we get the Lover's card again. And for me, uh, the lover's card, it can absolutely talk about relationships. It can indicate that maybe who you need to make a stand with is someone that you're caring about. Um, And yet the lovers is also emphasizing cooperation, harmony, and also compromise. But aside from just being a lovey-dovey love card, the lover's card is a major arcana card. And this can sometimes symbolize that it's dealing with deeper symbolism, something that's going on within you. And the three archetypes on the lover's card could be uh, interpreted as three different aspects of yourself that need to be in dialogue with one another. The male on the card could be your external self, the part of you uh, that gets out for work every day or puts your best foot forward, but doesn't really let people see that inner realm. And the woman on the card could be your emotions, your true feelings. And yet she's looking up to the angel for guidance who represents your higher self or your spirit. And it just indicates that at this time for Blue Heron, it's time to check within and make sure that these different aspects of yourself right now are balanced, that they're in dialogue with one another. Second card is going to be uh, advice from your inner wisdom this next week for the Heron. And we got that beautiful Ten of Cups card. This is a card of resolution, happy endings, but it's also a relationship card. We can see a joyous relationship happening on the card and the kids are dancing. This for me is a card of gratitude. And also that rainbow on the card, although it looks idyllic, rainbows only appear after a storm. So this could indicate that it's time to bring harmony back after a stormy period, either within yourself first so that you're in harmony, but also once you're balanced with others too. It might be a time to work toward consensus or compromise. But I just kind of feel like balance, harmony, gratitude, these are going to be the themes this next week, which are really going to set you free from any lingering suffering that might have been going on. And then we got the mythic archetype that's going to help you uh, this next week if you pick the blue heron. And we have Hestia. She's the goddess of the hearth and the home. She represents the warm hearth flame. And she can indicate, number one, that it's time for you to come home to your authentic self, to where you feel the most warm and cozy in your existence. It might be a time to be that person right now and maybe unhook yourself from drama or even inner conflict that's preventing you from getting to that sacred home place within you. But also Hestia does have to do with the home, especially next to the Ten of Cups. You can see that little house in the distance there. This could be a time to sort things out with the people you're living with or living around or the people that you interact with in your daily life. Next, we're going to go into the Snow Leopard, and this card says, take some time out of your usual life and spend it in solitude. 
And snow leopard is a solitude uh, animal. It, it's an animal that lives in solitude, I should say. And it's a survivor. It lives in the mountains, in the coldest regions. And there's not very many snow leopards left because it really takes a special snow leopard uh, to exist and thrive uh, with all the uh, decks stacked against it with the encroachment of humans uh, and also uh, just the harsh uh, realities that it lives in. So this could be a time when you really need to stay on what you want to keep surviving in your own life. And you might need to unhook from other people periodically in order to get that clarity of mind to make that happen. First card for Snow Leopard is where it's best to place your focus this next week. And we get the Hangman reversed, which is such an interesting card because, you know, upright, the Hangman is upside down. But when he's reversed, he's right side up. And what this is telling me is that it's almost time for you uh, to step out of this time of suspension, uh, this stasis. It might indicate that this is a year where you're getting back on your feet again. You might have been feeling like things are really stacked against you or even something that you've really been hoping for in your life. It's just been suspended. It hasn't been moving forward. And now this is saying this is actually an opportunity time for you to start to get the ball rolling again with that. I kind of feel like you're getting back on your feet this next week. The advice from your inner wisdom is the Six of Pentacles. And in myths and stories throughout history, uh, there are stories of how an angel or a goddess will disguise themselves as a beggar, sort of like on this card. And yet uh, they test you to see if you're going to see the divinity in their eyes, if you're going to treat them well, even if their external appearance doesn't uh, you know, show that it's a god or a goddess or an angel. And here we see that here, we got the wealthy merchant who's seen the value in the poor. He's giving his time and energy, and he's holding those scales of karma, which means he's cultivating good karma for himself. The advice from your inner wisdom this next week is to look out for the benefactors. Look out for those who are in your path to teach you a lesson. Not necessarily someone you're going to materially, materially gain anything from, but those that really give you a message that might even come in the form of a person that you might disregard or not pay attention to right away. I think of the bird woman on the Mary Poppins movie. Don't walk past the bird woman this next week. And then we also got the mythic archetype that's going to help you. And we got Demeter and she's the goddess of the harvest. Um, and she's also a seasonal goddess. She brings in the winter when she's grieving Persephone, her daughter, when she goes to the underworld. But then she brings back the spring and the summer when reunited with the goddess of spring. So this could be a time where you really need to know that every Everything does have its season. Things are turning around for you. And a big harvest is assured for you. So stay patient and also stay kind to keep cultivating that good karma. And then we got the Walworths uh, card, and the Walrus says, Remain vigilant about the current situation. Pay attention to signs and omens, and let them dictate your choices. So this could be a time to be observant. The Walrus is also in the water realm. So this could be a time when you're paying attention to your instincts, your feelings, that watery element, uh, really trusting your gut this next week. First card for Walrus is where it's best for you to place your focus this next week. And we get the Hierophant card, which for me is always a card of signs and signals and omens. The Hierophant is the interpreter of the divine for mortals uh, in mortal form. He kind of takes the, the sacred and he interprets it for the acolytes before his throne. He also has the keys at the bottom of his throne of which he has access to unlock the sacred realms. And so signs, signals, omens, all of this is coming from your angels this next week, from your helpers, from whatever uh, you kind of look up to or spiritually connect to. And so pay attention to those patterns because I feel like the way is being made clear. Next is going to be advice from your inner wisdom this next week for the walrus. And we got the Ten of Pentacles. Both the Hierophant and the Ten of Pentacles are also traditional cards, like uh, representing tradition. So this could be a time to honor your traditions. It could also be a time to honor your legacy and to follow those omens and signs and signals on your way towards security. Whatever you're trying to build for that long-term legacy, that long-term security for you, don't lose faith, don't lose hope. Pay attention to those signs and stay vigilant. 
And then finally, the mythic archetype that can help you are the sirens. Now, these beautiful mermaids have lovely voices and lure sailors into the rocks. And there's a story about Odysseus who's trying to get home. That's his goal, getting home. And he's going past the sirens and he's asking to get tied to the mast of the ship so he isn't attracted to abandoning his quest and going toward his destruction. So too with you, stay focused on the goal. Don't listen to the siren song, the distractions, the procrastination. Uh, really stay focused on what you're trying to do here. And that is this week's Oracle. Do uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can always get a one-on-one reading with me at elliotoracle.com. Otherwise, I'll see you again next week. So do take care.